Hello attendees of the Computer Vision in Sports Workshop. I'm excited to present our paper entitled Group Activity Detection from Trajectory and Video Data in Soccer. This research was produced by a group of researchers at SportLogic in Montreal, Canada. Here's a quick outline of what I will be talking about. I'm going to provide an introduction to our project and talk about the methodology, how we split up our data into trajectory-based approaches and vision-based approaches. I'll talk about how we evaluated our model, the data we used, and the final results. And I'll finish off with some model behavior, error analysis, and some conclusions. So group activity detection in sports has several practical applications, including assessing team strategy and player's performance, and also used for media content generation. However, a big challenge in sports is that the action and events tend to be autonomous. That is, they have no notion of duration and are only marked at one single moment in time. This makes it impossible to use typical losses such as the temporal eye view. So to address this issue, we explore the effectiveness of using activity recognition models for detecting atomic events using an intuitive non-maximum suppression process and evaluation metrics. Here, we use two types of input data. Trajectory data that is based on the player and ball locations on the field, and video-based data that uses information extracted from the video sequence. We also investigated different approaches to model interaction between the players and ball, which could be an important uh, feature for recognizing group activity. Here we hypothesized that self-attention models such as the transformer can effectively learn and extract relevant information for predicting group activity. We then conducted a comprehensive analysis on a large-scale soccer data set provided by SportLogic to test our models. For our trajectory-based models, we took advantage of normalized player and ball locations on the pitch over T frames. For all our models, we experimented with different types of input, such as only including the ball location, ball and all player locations, and ball and the K nearest players to the ball. We designed three different models to investigate the effectiveness of self-attention. We first built a WaveNet model with dilated 1D temporal convolutional network, a transformer network, and a final model that combines both the WaveNet and a transformer. For the vision-based models, we used short clips of T-frames with some input size H by W. Here we explored different types of models with different inputs. All the models we investigated used an I3D convolutional neural network, in particular a ResNet 18 as the backbone. We first trained an I3D model to classify activity using the entire frame as input. However, the activity tends to only occur on a small portion of the frame. Thus, we wanted to model the relationship between the players because, again, we, we hypothesized that this could serve as an important feature for group activity recognition. For these models, we used tubelets of n players visible on the frame as input. Here, we defined a tubelet as a sequence of bounding box images around the player. For these models, we explored three different ways of modeling the relationship between the players. First, we tried, looked at the maximum activation over the bounding boxes. We looked at the graph convolutional network defined based off the, pro, the player's proximity to each other. And finally, we, we created a transformer network that has the ability to use itself attention mechanism to learn some relationship between the players. All of our models, they were trained as an activity recognition task, where a segment would have one label. However, given that we were interested in group activity detection, we evaluated our models as an activity detection task. To evaluate our models, we take the predicted probabilities for each class and apply class-specific thresholds. We then apply an intuitive non-maximum suppression process that avoids multiple detections over some window for each event. These threshold and window sizes were optimized to reach a maximum F-score on the validation data. We calculate the true positive, false positive, and false negative by using the following that can be seen in this figure. A positive prediction is counted as a true positive if and only if there exists a ground truth event within some temporal distance. Here we represent that with the blue shape. And the rest of the detections are taken as false positives. A ground truth event is counted as a false negative if there are no positive predictions assigned to it. If there are multiple predicted events that exist within a temporal window, the positive prediction is assigned to the nearest ground truth event, and the rest of the detections are taken as false positives. With this approach, we are able to calculate the precision, recall, and F-score. We are also interested in measuring the distance of our predictions, that is, how far were the predicted events from the actual events. 
Here we label this error as the temporal distance. For our data, we have 74 soccer games from the English Premier League from the 2018-2019 season. This was provided by Sport Logic. We split the games into 64 training, five validation, and five tests. The events of interest that we were interested in were detecting pass, reception, and shots. The vision-based model was trained on clips of 25 frames centered on the event frame. We also jittered the data by plus minus two frames. This was really used as a form of data augmentation. The trajectory-based models were trained on segments of 51 frames centered on the event frame. No data augmentation was used. We also randomly sampled frames that were not passed, shot, nor reception, and used these segments as background. For the trajectory-based models, we, we see that we achieved the best performance when we used ball location in the five closest players when we combined the 1D temporal convolutional network and the transformer. We also performed an ablation study where we demonstrated that the model does not benefit from accessing trajectory data from all players. For the vision-based vision model, surprisingly, we achieved the best performance when the I3D was applied to the full frame data. We suspect that the full frame formed the best because the entire scene provides sufficient context that's useful for group activity recognition. In particular, we see that the all bounding box models perform poorly in a shot and recognizing a shot because an important feature of a shot sequence is the net, which cannot be sufficiently captured with player tubelets. Here we show a demo so of the vision-based and our trajectory-based models. So we can see the vision-based model on the left and the trajectory-based model on the right. The y-axis represents the predicted probabilities after our NMS process, while the x-axis represents each frame. One can appreciate that the model predicts the pass and reception quite well, and at the end, we'll actually see a, a shot that's properly predicted by both models. Here we provide some insight into our model behavior. On the left, we can see the plots after the NMS for the, from the model that only used the ball and also the model that used both ball and player locations. We notice that while both models are able to detect events, including the player position, increases our model temporal resolution, which leads to significantly lower temporal distance for all events. This suggests that while modeling the interaction between the ball and players is important, not all players are required to achieve best performance. We also explored errors associated with our models. A notable error is a situation where a player receives a pass but does not control it immediately. We hypothesize that this error can be alleviated by using longer input sequences for both training and testing. To conclude, we conducted a comprehensive analysis for, with both vision and trajectory based methods for group activity detection, where we explored the capability of a self attaching mechanism in a transformer model to learn player and ball interactions. Our experiment, experiments were performed on a large-scale soccer data set from the English Premier League. We observed that training models as an activity recognition task, but testing as an activity detection task, appears to be a promising solution for atomic events. However, training models with short clips tend to have issues with detecting events that require a longer temporal window. We found that the best performing trajectory based model leverages a self-attention mechanism in a transformer to model the relationship between the ball and players highlighting the importance of the ball and player interaction for group activity detection. Surprisingly, the I3D model trained with the full frame data performed the best as opposed to modeling player interactions. We hypothesize that the content plays a significant role in predicting group activity. In the future, we would like to explore the effectiveness of modeling player interactions in static camera setups where the context remains the same regardless of where, what happens in the event, so the camera does not move. For more information, you can find the full paper on archives. Thank you.